Let's see how we can create a cute animated chest like this, and how we can make the player collect the items from the chest. The project files for this video are, as always, available through selected tiers on Patreon. And now, let's get started! This is the demo project I'm going to be using for this video. It has a simple world with a tilemap layer for the background, and a just a simple player that has animated movement. That's it. To create our chest, we first need two sprites. One for when the chest is closed, and one for when it is open. All the art I've made for this video are available on itch.io. Okay, so let's start by making a new scene for our chest. I want the player to be able to collide with the chest, so it can't just move through it. And I also don't think this chest will be moving on its own. So I'm making the root node a static body 2D. The static body 2D needs a collision shape, and then our chest also needs a sprite and an animation player so we can create the open animation. You could also use an animated sprite here, but I want to add a little squeeze and stretch to the animation, which the animation player is perfect for. To make the player be able to walk behind the chest, I'm making sure that the collision shape only covers the bottom of the chest. Now we're ready to make our open animation. I'm going to be creating an animation with 10 frames per second. This is the speed I prefer for this animation, but you can always play around with this and see what you prefer. We're going to make this animation using the sprites Scale, Position and Frame. For the first frame in the animation, I'm then inserting a key for these properties. In the next frame, we'll shrink the sprite a bit by setting the scale to 0.9. I also still want it to look like it's staying put so we need to adjust the position a bit as well. After the shrinking, we now want the chest to jump up and open. So I'm first changing the frame, so the chest looks open. And then I'm making the chest bigger by setting the scale to 1.5. This time, I don't want the chest to stay put. Instead, I want it to jump up. I'm still adjusting the position, but this time it will be about 2 pixels above the default position. Finally, in the last frame, we keep the chest open, reset the scale and adjust the position so the chest is placed on the ground again. Now we have this cute animation for when the chest opens. Our chest also needs a script. For now, I'm just adding a method for interacting with it. And then I play the open animation here. We will be creating a new interaction component to make the player interact with our new chest. You can also use this approach to interact with other things in your game later. The interaction component can be created in its own new scene, but I'm just creating it directly in the player scene here. We need to be able to detect the chest, so I'm making the component an area 2D and then I'm adding a circular collision shape to it. The player will then be able to interact 
with all chests that are touching this circle. We're keeping the detection like this in this video, but you might want to change this later so the player is only able to interact with things in front of them. In my own game, the interaction component has four MAGA 2Ds that are used to move the collision shape around. But I'm leaving it up to you to implement this, if this is something you want as well. Okay, so next let's make sure that our interaction component only collides with objects that we plan to be interactable. To do this, we can decide that Collision Layer 2 should only be for interactions. I'm quickly giving the two first layers a name so I can remember what they're for later. Our interaction component should then only listen for objects on Layer 2, so we make sure that Layer 2 is selected in the Collision Mask. And then we also need to place our chest on both Collision Layer 1 and 2. One is for colliding with the player, and two is then for the interaction. Next, we can connect the interaction components on body entered and exited signals to its script. The player might not press the interact key the exact same time as a chest is entering the interaction component's collision shape. So we need to store all potential interactions somehow, and then interact with all possible interactions when we press the interact key. To store objects we can interact with, we can create an array at the top of the script. Here, I want to store collision object 2Ds. We could also just use physics body spot I might want to expand our interaction to include items made with an Area 2D later on. And since both the Area 2D node and Physics Body 2Ds inherit from Collision Update 2D, that's what I'm going with here. When a body enters, we then add it to the Can Interact array if it has an interact method. And when a body exits, we remove it from can interact. If you want to interact with items that inherit from area 2Ds later, then you can just connect the area entered and exited signals to the same methods here. Now we also need to add a new input action to trigger the interaction. I'm calling mine interact and add the enter input event to the action. Back in our script, we can then add an unhandled key input method and if the interact action is pressed, we then call the interact method on all objects in the can interact array. We can now move the player close to the chest and open it by pressing the enter key. To enable Y sorting between the player and the chest, I quickly enable Y sorting on the world scenes root node and move the player and the chest to set index 1. Right now, the player can just open the chest again and again, but we only want to open it once. To do this, we can simply add a boolean variable at the top of the chest script that keeps track of the state of the chest. When we interact with it, we set is open to true, and we also return immediately if is open is true when the interact method is called. Now we should only be able to open the chest once. The next thing we need to look at is how we can add things 
to the chest. But first, we need a way to define the items that can actually be placed in the chest. If you already have an inventory for your player, then you should already have something like this. For this video, I'm creating a new resource called inventory item, and then this should have an exported texture and a name. You might also have other variables here, depending on how your inventory works. The inventory item I'm making here is a simplified version of the one we're making in my series on how to make an inventory in Godot. Now I can create a new inventory item for each of the things that can be placed in the chest. Here I'm creating a sword resource and a coin resource. In our chest script, we can then add an exported dictionary where we will add the items for the chest as the keys and then the amount of each item as the value. We can then select the chest we added to our world scene and add items to it from the inspector menu. Here I'm adding two coins and a single sword to this chest. Now we have a chest that can be opened, and we know what items are placed in that chest. The last thing we then need to figure out is how the player should collect these items. There are a lot of ways to handle this, but in this tutorial I'm going to make the player collect all the items from the chest automatically with a cute little animation like this. In a later video, we can then explore how to open an inventory GUI for both the chest and the player, and then let the player manually transfer items from one to the other. Our chest needs access to the node interacting with it to add items to the node's inventory. So in my interaction component, I've added an unready variable that gets the component's parent and then I add this as input to the interact method. Now let's add a new method to our chest script for spawning and collecting items. In this new method we can go through all the items in the chest and then we'll want to repeatedly spawn and collect an item as many times as the amount specifies. To make the items move up from the chest, I'm first adding two marker2d nodes to the chest scene. These will specify where the items will start and end. I'm then also adding a reference to the positions of these to the chest script. We can just use a sprite 2D to visualize the items we are collecting. So down inside our loops here, I'm first creating a new sprite, adding the current inventory items texture as the sprite's texture, setting the sprite position to the item start position, and adding it as a child of the chest. Now we can animate the upward movement using a tween. After creating the tween, we use a tween property to move the item to the item end position. And here I'm setting the duration to 0 0.3. Finally, we also need to call this new method from our interact method. But let's wait till after the open animation has finished. 
if we test this now, we can see that the items are moving up from the chest. However, they all do this at the same time, which is a bit confusing. So let's add an await for the tween to finish here. This way the loop won't continue until the tween has finished and the items will now spawn and move up one at a time. Finally, we need to also move the items to the player and then add it to the player's inventory. For this, I'm creating a new collect tween after the other tween has finished. Here, we can move the sprite to the interactor's global position. When this tween is finished, we need to free the sprite and add the item to the interactor's inventory. But we don't want to stall the spawning of the next item while we wait for the collect tween. Instead of using a new await here, we can add a callback method to the collect tween. The callback should then queue free the sprite and add the item to the interactor's inventory. However, what if, for some reason, this chest is interacted with by a node that doesn't have an inventory? Then this would definitely fail. We need to make sure that an inventory actually exists before adding something to it. Actually, I think I want to make sure that an inventory exists before even opening the chest and spawning the items. We can use the get method to see if the interactor has a property called inventory. And then if it doesn't, or if its inventory variable is not of the inventory type, then we immediately return and the chest won't even open. To test that we can now collect the items, I've just added a simple inventory GUI based on the inventory from my inventory series. At first, the inventory is empty. But now the player can then open the chest, the items will move up above the chest and towards the player where they will then be collected. And now the items have been added to the player's inventory. What we've made so far is great, but I just want to fine tune it a bit. First, I want to change the first tween a bit so the item isn't just moving at a linear speed. For this, we can use the setTrans method when we create the tween. Here we can then set the transition type. I'm choosing the elastic transition, but I do encourage you to try out a few different ones to see which one you prefer. Secondly, let's set the sprites set index to one more than the interactor's set index. This makes sure that it's always displayed on top of the interactor. I hope you liked this video and remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future. Bye!